All right, welcome back. Last time we looked at the product rule for taking derivatives, where we learned how to take the derivative of two functions multiplied together. But now it's time to look at the quotient rule, where we look at how to take the derivative when you have one function divided by another, or the quotient of two functions. And so here is our quotient rule. If we have a function f of x divided by another function g of x, the derivative of their quotient is going to be equal to the function in the denominator times the derivative of the numerator function minus the numerator function times the derivative of the denominator function all over the denominator squared. And that is provided that that denominator is not zero, which in most cases it won't be. And so let's look at an example where we see this quotient rule in action. So if I want to know the derivative or d dx of the function 8x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, what would be the derivative of that function? Well, first we want to identify what our numerator and denominator functions are, or our f of x function and our g of x function. Well, in this case, our f of x is going to be that 8x plus 1, and our g of x is going to be equal to x squared minus 1. So those are our two functions. We have our numerator, that is going to be f of x, and our denominator, which is g of x, which lines up with our notation up here. So then if we're going to take the derivative, this is going to be equal to the denominator function g of x times the derivative of the numerator. So let's start with that. We will have x squared minus 1, and that's going to be multiplied by the derivative of this 8x plus 1. And so the derivative of 8x plus 1 is actually just going to be 8, because the derivative of 8x is going to be 8, and then the derivative of 1 is just 0. So we're just left with 8. Then we're going to be subtracting that numerator function, so we'll have that 8x plus 1, multiplied by the derivative of our denominator function. In that case, it's x squared minus 1, as you can see here. And so the derivative of x squared minus 1 is going to be 2 x, right? The derivative of x squared is 2 times x, and the derivative of negative 1 is just 0. So we're left with 2x. And then in the denominator of our answer, we are going to have g of x squared. So in this case, the denominator function, x squared minus 1 squared. So we'll have x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And so that would be an acceptable form of an answer for this derivative. And I should have added these parentheses here. There we go. Now it's a correct form. But if you wanted to have a nicer form, you could distribute this 8 through each part of this quantity and this 2x through each part of this quantity. And if you did that, I'll quickly give you the nicer answer here. This would be equal to negative 8x squared minus 2x minus 8, all divided by x squared minus 1 squared. And so that would be the result from this answer here. So if you want to try that and see if you get the same answer as I did, you are welcome to do that. In fact, I would encourage it. But let's look at another example. All right, so next we're going to look at the derivative of cosine divided by x. So this is a quotient of two functions. And you'll notice that I have provided the quotient rule right here so that we can reference it when needed. So let's start by identifying what our two functions are in this case. And the easiest way to do this is to look at what our function is in the top and what our function is in the bottom. So in this case, our two functions are cosine x and x. So this is going to be equal to, or the derivative will be equal to the original denominator function, which in this case is x times the derivative of the top or the numerator function. In this case, it's cosine, right? We have cosine in our numerator. So we'll take the derivative of cosine and we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Then if we reference our quotient rule over here, we can see that we will now subtract the original top or numerator function times the derivative of the bottom or denominator function. So we're going to have cosine x multiplied by the derivative of x, which we know is just going to be one. And this is all going to be divided by the denominator function squared. So that will be x squared. So now we can simplify our answer and we're going to have negative x times sine x minus cosine x all divided by x squared. And that would be our final answer or our derivative of our function cosine x divided by x. All right, let's look at another example here. This time we have y equals the square root of x divided by x plus 2. And we want to know the derivative or dy dx of that function. 
And once again, here is our rule for us to reference. So let's start by identifying what our two functions are, right? In most cases, it's just going to be what is the numerator or what is the denominator or our top and bottom functions. So in this case, our f of x function is the square root of x, our numerator is the square root of x, and the denominator, or the g of x function, is x plus 2. So those are our two functions we're working with, the square root of x and x plus 2. So let's get started with our derivative. We will have dy dx equals the original denominator function, so we'll have x plus 2, times the derivative of the square root of x. And remember, we can actually rewrite the square root of x to be x to the 1 half power, and that will make it a little easier for you to visualize our power rule. So the derivative of x to the 1 half power is going to be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power, because if we subtract 1 from our exponent, 1 half will get negative 1 half. Then we will subtract the original numerator function, which we said was the square root of x, or x to the 1 half power, but I'm just going to keep it as the square root of x in this case, multiplied by the derivative of our denominator. So that's going to be just 1, right? The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So it would be 1 plus 0, which is just 1. And this is all going to be divided by the denominator function squared. So we'll have x plus 2 squared. And so now I'll do a little bit of simplifying by moving our negative exponent into the denominator of this fraction here, and that will leave us with an acceptable answer. So then we'll have that this is equal to x plus 2 divided by 2 times the square root of x, right? We moved this quantity to the top of our 1 half, and then we moved our x to the negative 1 half power to the denominator, so it would be positive, and then we changed it back to the square root, and then we'll have minus the square root of x divided by x plus 2 squared. And that would be the answer, or the derivative, to our original function up here. So one of the cool things about the quotient rule is that we can use it to prove some of our derivative rules for trigonometric functions. Because in the past, I just told you that the derivative of tangent x was secant squared x, but I didn't tell you why. Well, now we can see why and actually go through all the steps because we know about the quotient rule. And you're saying, well, I don't see a quotient. I just see tangent x. Well, remember, we can redefine tangent, and so we can have the derivative, or ddx, of sine x divided by cosine x, right? Tangent x is equal to sine divided by cosine. So now all of a sudden we have a quotient. We have sine x divided by cosine x. So now we can go through and use our quotient rule. So we're gonna have that this is equal to the denominator, cosine x, times the derivative of the numerator, which is sine x. So the derivative of sine x is going to be cosine x minus the numerator function, sine x, times the derivative of the denominator, which in this case is the derivative of cosine, so we'll have negative sine x. And then this will all be divided by the denominator squared, so we'll have cosine x squared. So now if we were to simplify this, this would be equal to cosine squared x, because cosine times cosine will be cosine squared x, and then we will have plus, because we have this subtraction and a negative here, those are going to cancel, so we'll have plus sine squared x, and that will be divided by cosine squared x. So now what do we know about cosine squared x plus sine squared x? Well, this is one of our trigonometric identities where we know that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So we can rewrite this as 1 over cosine squared x. And then that is going to be equal to secant squared x because 1 over cosine is equal to secant. So then if you have that cosine squared, then it would be secant squared. And that's how you get from the derivative of tangent x to our answer of secant squared x. So kind of a neat thing to see. In fact, we'll look at one more trig derivative here, and then we'll look at more in our example video. So here we have our trig rule where the derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x times cotangent x. So now let's prove this one using our quotient rule. And first thing we need to note is that although this doesn't look like a quotient, we can rewrite cosecant x to be 1 over sine x. So really this is the derivative, or ddx, of 1 divided by sine x. And now we have a quotient that we can use our quotient rule for. We have 1 in our numerator, so that's our top function, and then we have sine in the denominator. That would be our bottom function. So this is going to be equal to the denominator 
times the derivative of the top. So we're gonna have sine x times the derivative of one, which is zero because one is a constant and a derivative of any constant will be zero, minus the numerator, one times the derivative of the denominator, which in this case is the derivative of sine x, which we know is cosine. And then this will all be divided by our denominator squared. So we'll have sine squared. So now let's simplify and see what answer we get here. We're gonna have that this is equal to zero, right? Zero times sine x is going to be zero minus cosine x divided by sine squared x. So now we can simplify this again and we'll have that this is equal to negative cosine x divided by sine squared x. So now typically we would say, all right, I'm done, but we wanna get back to this form up here to actually prove our derivative rule here. We wanna show that the derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x cotangent x. So how do we manipulate our trig functions here? Well, let's split it up. Let's split our denominator and let's rewrite it like this. We'll have negative one over sine x times cosine x divided by sine x. So all we did here is we split up our function into two functions multiplied together. It's still equal to the same thing, right? We have our negative one right here and our cosine x right here in our numerator, and we have a sine x in each one of our denominators. So if we were to multiply this back together, we would result in this right here. So they're equal to the same thing. And so then what is this equal to? Well, we can rewrite one over sine x as cosecant x. So this can be written as negative cosecant x, and then we know that cotangent x is equal to cosine x divided by sine x. So then this would be equal to cotangent x. And then all of a sudden, we have our answer. We have now just proven that the derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x times cotangent x. Hopefully you were able to follow that because I think that's kind of cool how we are able to now prove that these derivative rules are true using this quotient rule. So now let's look at a regular example that doesn't deal with our trig functions. We have the derivative with respect to z of z squared plus four times z divided by nine. Now this is an important one because just because you see a quotient of two functions doesn't always mean you need to use the quotient rule. Sometimes you might be doing a little bit of unnecessary work if you do it. Because look in this case, we just have a constant or a coefficient of one ninth here, right? If we pull this nine out, all of a sudden we just have a power rule function. So look at this. If we rewrite this, we'll have the derivative with respect to z of the function one ninth times z squared plus four z. So in this case, we don't need to use our quotient rule because there are no variables that we're taking a derivative of in the denominator. There's no z's down here. We can just pull out that nine that our numerator function is being divided by. So then we're left with just one ninth times this. And as we know, we can take a derivative of a function times a constant by just multiplying that constant times the derivative of that function. So then we'll have that this is equal to one ninth times the derivative of z squared, which is going to be two z plus the derivative of four z, which is just going to be four. And so then we can redefine our answer here to just have this quantity divided by nine. And we'll have that our answer is equal to two z plus four divided by nine, and that would be the answer to our derivative in this case. So we didn't need to go through and use our quotient rule because that would have just wasted our time. All we had to do was pull out that one ninth and then take a derivative like we normally would. Let's look at one more final example. All right, finally we have the function x squared divided by x cubed plus x, and we wanna know the derivative at the value of x equals one, or the slope at the value of one. And you'll notice I don't have our quotient rule here readily available for us to reference because I think for this last one, we should really try to take this derivative without referencing it so that we really get that quotient rule in our head so we don't have to look it up every time. So let's start by writing f prime of x is equal and let's start taking our derivative by using the quotient rule here. So first we notice we have our numerator function of x squared and our denominator function of x cubed plus x. So we'll start by multiplying our denominator function by the derivative of the top. So we'll have x cubed plus x times the derivative of x squared, which will be two x minus the numerator function x squared times the derivative of the bottom. So we'll have three x squared plus one, right? Because the derivative of x cubed is three x squared and the derivative of just x is one. And then we'll divide by the denominator squared. 
So now this is an acceptable answer for our derivative, and you may want to simplify this a little bit, but since we're just plugging in a value of one, we don't really need to simplify this. Let's just plug in one everywhere there's an x, and then we'll get our answer. So if we plugged in one into our derivative, we're going to get one cubed plus one times two times one minus one squared times three times one squared plus one, all divided by one cubed plus one squared. Now I went through and plugged this in a calculator. Hopefully you will get the same result if you do it by hand or if you plug it in the calculator yourself. This is actually going to be equal to zero divided by four, which will then be equal to zero. And so that is the answer to our derivative evaluated at x equals one. But that is the last example I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked in the description as well as at the end of this video that you can click on. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.